Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Before we get started, I just want to share a couple of things, uh, just little reminders to please go rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcast or Spotify, get some stars. It, it really, really helps the podcast. I know I keep beating this drum, but it is super important. So thank you to those people who've already done it. And and anything, any kind of feedback is fabulous. Uh, I need to hear it. And for those of you who haven't done it, it's a real small gesture that it does make a huge impact for women in menopause. Uh, the next thing I'd like to share with you is to remind you, we have amazing menopause programs out there to help you and guide you step by step. So please check that out at hackmange.com. Don't forget. And we've got freebies, uh, loads of resources for you. I keep adding to it and to the blog, uh, how to find practitioners, how to find doctors who know about hormones, uh, how to biohack your way through this whole journey and alternatives to hormone therapy. There's so much stuff out there. So please don't forget to go to hackmyage.com and find all of that stuff. And the last reminder is the membership group. Now we are up and running. By March now, this is uh, this podcast should be released in March. Um, we've already finished with our founding members group, which got a really special deal. Uh, now we're at $24.99 per month. So please jump on there um, before we get too big and have another price increase. So we'd love to have you there jump on in. It's a wonderful community of like-minded women. And we have guest experts, doctors and researchers, and just experts in the fields of, of menopause, hormones, and biohacking. So it would be wonderful for you to attend that live Q&A where some of my guests you're hearing on the podcast are actually coming on there for a full hour of Q&A with you guys. So please go there. It's biohacking-menopause.mn.co. And you can find that link in the show notes. So let's get started with my guest who I'm having on for a second time. And this is my menopause bestie, Karen Martell. Our first interview was back in August last year, 2022. So I really encourage you to go back and listen to that episode. I'll have it in the show notes too. We covered so much hormone therapy, the struggles with weight loss, because that's her jam is how to lose weight, uh, peptides, nutrition, dim, estrogen metabolism. Um, we we talked about so many things. It, it's pretty chock-a-block. And, and this time we're gonna take a little deeper dive into, or we did already take a deeper dive into how women take hormone therapy. It can be so confusing when you just get started and she clears a lot of the confusion, but boy, we had a lot to talk about. I really like Karen. She's that that bestie you always want to have that, that can help you through so many things during this journey. She's a wonderful person. That's why I have her on for a second time. Not only is she super knowledgeable, but she's kind. She's empathetic. She's driven. She's a hard worker. And I absolutely love her. So um, we're going to have her on again because we got through just a few questions <laughs> and all the whole the, 25 questions for her. And uh, we only got through a few because we were just going back and forth. And it was so, so intriguing what she had to say. So we are going to have her on again for sure. So uh, don't worry. So a little bit more about Karen. She's a woman like you and me, um, also going through this menopause transition herself. I think she's in her 40s, like 47, 48, I want to say. Um, she started uh, going through this transition much earlier than um, usual, but her mission is really to help women in this phase of life because she knows a ton about hormones and she knows a lot about managing that unexplained weight gain that some of us get in menopause. And she's not only a certified hormone specialist, but she's also a transformational nutrition coach and an authority on women's weight loss. You know, she's got all these certifications and all this stuff in her back, but what really what she's got is a lot of experience. She's been at this game, I think about 10 years or so, and she's been helping women through their lab work, through through understanding how to read their, their lab work, how to test, how to take the hormones. So she's got a lot of clinical experience 
And that really, really counts. So anyways, um, you know, she's she's got also this amazing podcast, just one of my favorites. I learned so much from it called The Hormone Solution. And she unravels those enigmas of female fat loss and hormone imbalances. So check that out. And for sure, you're going to learn something new and just be more in charge of your well-being. And Karen herself, she really went through her own health challenges. And she talks about this all the time um, with, with me on the podcast, with on her podcast. And she really understands what you are probably going through. And she's created an amazing approach to women's health, um, their, her, her, their hormone health and weight management. She goes beyond that. The regular advice of diet and exercise, um, she even disrupts what we think we know about weight loss. And our true passion really lies in supporting women during this transformative peri and post menopausal phases. And she loves guiding them to help help them with their weight management challenges. So check her out. You're going to love this conversation, I promise you, <laughs> and I know it's going to help you. So let's get started. So now it's an honor to have my menopause bestie here, Karen Martell. Welcome. Oh, are we menopause besties? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> we are menopause besties, Zora. Yeah. I've got my I host. watch her stuff all the time and, and I'm just like, oh, I just love everything that she does because you're so aligned with me and like we're both so such advocates for women in midlife and to have a good midlife. So yeah. You are my bestie and I love everything you do too. And just, you're so, you've got so much knowledge. There's, there are not that many people who know as much as you do. And so it really is an honor to have you here and, and for the second time. So, and we're going to have many more here. And, yes. and like I mentioned in the introduction that we did our first uh, episode last August, and we covered so much there. This time, we're really going to take a deep dive into hormones and the menopause therapy, like hormone menopause therapy. And we're going to start off with a history of hormone replacement therapy, which is HRT. People know that. And the differences between prescription, over-the-counter, and compounding pharmacies. So why don't you you start, and then I'm going to interrupt you from there. So history of HRT. I always like to talk about this because a lot of people think it's like new to the block or something. Like they're like, oh, hormone replacement therapy. No, no, you know, and they get all like defensive about it. Like this, it's this new drug on the market and it's bad for us. And because it's run by pharmaceutical companies. And when you actually look at the history of bioidentical hormones and hormone replacement therapy, you can actually find evidence of people using it in China thousands of years ago, which I think is so interesting. Mm -hmm. They used to, the, the empresses and emperors of China thousands of years ago, there's recordings that they, somewhere, I don't know where, but recordings of them, um, they would ingest the dried urine of young people. Yes. So I just like, what? So they, this... they were onto this thousands of years ago. Yes. And I bet there was other cultures that did this too. You, you are, because I just interviewed Dr. David Rosensweet, who created the um, Menopause Method Program, which you know from the Institute of Bioidentical I Medicine. We're both doing the, that, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I'm so glad you're doing this too. It's such a good program. And he... He said that. He said, oh, we've been using hormones for thousands of years. I was like, <laughs> the scratched record, like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and he said, the same thing. I was like, there's no way. I had no idea. And it's incredible. Yeah. It's nothing new. Thousands of years. Probably in the ancient scrolls or something. I would got to go find yeah. some of this. But it, I, I can see. I can, yeah, I, it makes yeah. sense. I mean, it wouldn't, it's not that surprising. Uh, so yeah, let's, it's, I think that the Egyptians would have too, for some reason, just because they were kind of on top of their looks, even back then, like they were like, they had makeup and they, they would, I don't know, like yeah. there's just, I, I just have a feeling I'm like, I bet they used it too. But yeah, yeah. so it starts, it's been around for a while and it's, it was, what's really funny is it started with human urine and then in the 1950s, it became 
horse's urine that we used to use and ingest for hormone therapy. So I think most people know that by now that there was this Premarin and that's where it all started with hormone replacement therapy is they would collect the urine from pregnant horses and we would ingest that in a pill form. And what's interesting is that was the number one prescribed medication in the 1950s. Man. The number one. So out of every prescription there was in America, that was prescribed more than any of them. Incredible. So you can imagine millions of women would have been on Premarin, That's hormone true. replacement therapy. And it was like, it, there was a book written about it called Forever Young, which is hilarious. I actually have a copy of it, which is <laughs> like, it's, have you read that? Zora? No, I know of it. I know oh, of it. It's, it's on my reading list because I hear so much about it. Pretty well, it's good. just because it's like the take of the man back then and how like women were supposed to be subservient and kind of in the kitchen. And so it's and quiet, that, and relaxed and chill. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so he kind of talks about how she starts to become this like awful person in menopause. And, you know, but if they put in estrogen, then she's like joyous again and doing yeah. her wifely duties. So anyways, Premarin, of course, was extremely popular. They used to even treat breast cancer with Premarin for a mm -hmm. period of time, which yeah. most people don't know that either, right? Yeah. When people think that estrogen is going to cause some breast cancer, well, that's not the case. It actually could help cure breast cancer. Um, and they were using it for that purpose way, way back when. Mm -hmm. And now your, your listeners know all about the WHI study. So the WHI study came around, they shunned the, the uh, hormone replacement therapy and, you know, 80% of women dropped their hormone replacement therapy. And now we've gone decades of um, suffering needlessly because of the wrong information that was given out to the world that came out of that WHI study, which was completely false. And now we know the truth of the matter was that the women that were on Premarin actually had a reduction in breast cancer by 24%. And a 45% reduction in death from breast cancer if they did get it, if they were on Premarin hormone replacement therapy. And now we have many more hormones to our, you know, as to, to choose from, basically. And so it can get a little bit confusing. We've now got, we can still get Premarin. You can get birth control pills, which many women still think, I would say, majority of women think that birth control pills are hormones, which mm -hmm. they are not. Mm -hmm. They're chemicals and they're hormone disruptors, endocrine disruptors. But they're still, their menopausal symptoms oftentimes are being treated with birth control pills. Mm -hmm. And that, the birth control pills is actually what is inside of them is what increases your risk of breast cancer, not estrogen, <laughs> not mm. bioidentical or horses estrogen, as we know from the study, actually reduces your risk. So birth control pills, which are given out like candy, and now you can get over the counter birth control pills. We give them to all of our daughters and or they're told they can stay on them for 10 plus years, 15 years, 20 years, all safely, which is not the case. So just to give everybody that balanced view, of, mm -hmm. you know, like we're all okay with birth control pills and our doctors are giving those out to like crazy, but you know, God forbid we give somebody bio hormones because doctors are still telling their menopausal patients that it's going to give them breast cancer and they refuse to prescribe them. But Hey, here's your birth control pills. It's crazy. I, I always find that it's so amazing. Nobody even bats an eye when it comes to birth control but then hormone yep. therapy, if for God forbid, and they're so different, so different. Mm -hmm. And I really, they, people need to think twice a little bit about that or just do their research. And and thank you for clarifying the history of, of, uh, of, of hormones and, and all that, because yeah, it, it does, it puts things in perspective. And I think we need to also just kind of um, understand the differences between all of these formulas, because when you first mm -hmm. think about, oh, maybe you hear a podcast like ours, or uh, your friend tells you about hormone therapy, you're like, oh, okay, maybe I'm going to get on this stuff. Now, what do I do? There's creams and lotions and potions and prescription over the counter, you know, compounding 
it is so confusing. I remember when I first started it as well, I was like, what in the world? And, <laughs> and it seems like there's still like new formulas coming out too and new things. And, mm -hmm. and the research hasn't really caught up to speed with all the stuff mm -hmm. that's out there either. They're not doing uh co compounded bioidentical hormonal cream versus a, uh, prescription spray or something and seeing how effective this is and women are just it needs to still be done so uh i think we, we we do have a lot of catching up to do so why don't you explain a little bit those differences between mm -hmm. the what we find there in terms of prescription mm -hmm. compounded as well yeah. as the different delivery methods as well yeah and it's you know it's shocking or how many practitioners hormone practitioners don't know the difference between some of these bioidentical hormone replacement therapies between the patches and the orals and the shots and the pellets and you know and there is some hard rules that we should be following and i don't care what any other practitioner says like there's a company that i know that a they'll give a birth control pills. They're, they say they're a hormone replacement therapy company, uh, telemedicine, but yet they'll give you only birth control pills if you're still having a period instead of progesterone. Oh my God. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, I actually, t I got on a Zoom call with the owner to say, why? That's not cool. <laughs> why are you, yeah, you can't, you shouldn't be doing that. It's a disservice to women. You guys are supposed to be supporting them and that's a disservice. And what they they also recommend oral estrogen. What? And what? yes, what? 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 and that's becoming very popular oral, like swallowing estrogen, as well as trochies. Trochies yeah. are these little things that you put in, into the side of your mouth or under your tongue and they dissolve and they're like, oh, it's just really just going into your tissues there, your, mm -hmm. your saliva glands. It's not, you're not getting it, you know, down into the digestive system, which is completely untrue. And that's, this is people wanting to make money off of this. These are people mm -hmm. that are making money off of oral estrogen and oral trochies. And we swallow, yeah, we swallow about half of that. Mm -hmm. And I just had a woman on my Instagram the other day. She's like, oh, I'm on oral estrogen, bioidentical, thinking like this is all good. She said, but I just got my labs back and my, I have my estradiol is really low. It's actually lower than when I started, but my estrone's gone super high. Hmm. This is what happens, you guys. When we take oral estrogen, whether it's bioidentical or it's from horses, so bioidentical is exactly the same makeup as what your body makes. So it's a body identical. And so you would think, oh, well, this is totally okay. Let's take this. This is coming from a bioidentical hormone therapy clinic. This is all good. It's because and it has to go through the first hepatic pass of the lip. And it gets converted to estrone, which is an inflammatory, proliferative estrogen. Now we need some estrone, great for the bones. It has its purpose. This is what we mainly start to produce when we're in menopause. And this is why women gain weight in menopause because it's inflammatory and it's this vicious cycle of it puts, we, we start to become estrone dominant. We start to put on fat because of it. And then fat cells make more estrone. Mm. So you start to get this super high estrone inflammatory because you're swallowing your estrogen and yeah, you're not getting any estradiol out of it because it's all getting converted to estrone. And when we swallow estrogen, you will have an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. And that is in a lot of different research papers. And unfortunately, they don't distinguish in those research papers what kind of estrogen was being used. So a lot of people think that, oh, estrogen is going to cause heart attack and stroke, or all estrogen, whether it's topical or oral, is going to be a problem. And that's not the case. If you look in the research, topical bioidentical estrogen does not increase the risk of heart attack and stroke. So for mm -hmm. people that are being told by their doctors, oh, you can't take that because you're at risk for stroke. I'm not saying that you're not going to get one from using it, but 
it, it does not increase your risk if it's topical and actually really helps to prevent heart disease and cardiometabolic death by up to 45% if you replace your estrogen in menopause with bioidentical transdermal estrogen. So there's the difference. We, like, we don't ever want to do oral estrogen nor oral testosterone. The other thing that's going to do is it's going to increase something called sex hormone binding globulin. This is a protein that binds to these hormones and makes it so that you can't use them on the cell. So we, they need to be free and available to dock onto that cell. It's like a little satellite dish that is going to dock onto and send its message through. So if your hormones are all bound up by the sex hormone binding globulin, you're not getting the hormones. And so you're swallowing and it's just, it's a complete mess. It's a hot mess if you're swallowing these hormones. Now, ones like progesterone, oral progesterone is very popular. Most practitioners are using oral progesterone. But oral progesterone has to be taken at a much higher dose. So you're typically, your starting dose is 100. And then I've seen practitioners go all the way up to 300 milligrams. And once again, it's going to go through the first hepatic pass of the liver. And so because of that, majority of that progesterone is going to be converted to its metabolites, but 80% is converted into metabolites. So you can almost think of oral progesterone almost like two different medications. Um, you're going to get these metabolites, which can be like a godsend to women. They, they, they're just like, oh my gosh, I'm sleeping so much better. I don't have anxiety because they're super calming. They act on the GABA receptors of your brain. So it helps you to induce sleep and helps to prevent the anxiety that can happen in perimenopause and menopause and PMS. So it um, can be incredible. But we are seeing a growing number of women who have a sensitivity to those metabolites. Mm. And we're talking, even if they're just on that small dose of 100 milligrams, and so they're only going to be getting about 20 milligrams of actual progesterone from that, so all of those metabolites can cause the opposite, where women can get severely depressed weepy and extremely fatigued because they are too sensitive to the metabolites. And very few practitioners know about this. And I know because I've been dealing with it for many, many years with clients. And I get a lot of women coming to me because I'm the, I'm the only person that they've ever heard talk about it. And they they, they say the same thing. I, this happened to me and my, my doctor just said I had to get used to it. Oh, my doctor said I had to increase my dose. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if you've ever had oh, this God. happen, you'll know this is not like this happened to me twice from oral progesterone where I took too much. And I will tell you, I have never been so depressed in my life. I, I remember thinking, is this what depressed people like somebody that's got severe depression? If like, it was so awful and I had, my heart goes out to anybody that, that suffers with depression. I couldn't stop crying. I was a hot mess. And luckily, you know, a couple of days of getting off of it, you'd return to normal, thankfully. Yeah. But this is a thing that's starting to happen more and more that I'm seeing in women. So we have to be very careful. And so there's a lot of doctors that will say you should only take oral progesterone because it's. It's, it will protect your uterus and topical progesterone won't. And you'll hear this all the time. I just saw one of my, one of my favorite influencers. She is a massive advocate for menopausal women and, and HRT. I've, I've been following her forever. And she just put out a video where she say, said, do not take progesterone cream. It doesn't work. Oh no. And she said, because it's coming from a compounding pharmacy. Oh, I and know she, who that yeah, is. I know who you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> I was so, I actually had to say something because somebody wrote to me and said, is this true? Like I just started proge your progesterone cream, Karen. Like now I'm now confused. What do I do? And so I explained to her where that came from and why doctors say that, which is odd. It's a weird thing, but progesterone cream doesn't show up in blood work but it absolutely protects your uterus. It's been used for decades. Um, menopause method, Dr. David Rosensweet, he's been in practice for over 30 years. 
he only uses topical progesterone. You look at the Wiley protocol. This is a protocol where they're mimicking a woman's natural cycle, but in menopause. So they use really high doses, the high, the very high end. You won't typically see this outside mm -hmm. of the, that protocol. So they're using, you know, topical progesterone. They never, ever use oral in the Wiley mm -hmm. protocol. And that Wiley protocol has been over 20 years. Um, and they have great success. These women aren't bleeding out be with this massive uterine lining. Yeah. So we know it works. We now, it, it really, honestly, there's so many different types of ways to take hormone therapy. Like you mentioned, and the most popular are, are, are orals and and um, well, patches as well and, and trans, transdermal. And the what I've been learning through Dr. Rosenstreet and many other programs and, and, and as well as hearing from women, we're all different. You yes. know, even though Dr. Rosenstreet himself is a fan of the transdermal, he sometimes sees that women are not absorbing it, right? Our skin is different. Yep. Our bodies are yep. different and he may sometimes have to go to an oral. So even, even so in the same vice versa, some people prefer the oral for one reason or another, and they feel sick because of their gut issues. And then they have yeah. to go to the transdermal. So it's nice that actually we have so many choices. And and really what I want women to understand is that uh, there is, everyone is different and you have to be your own biohacker to figure this all out. What works mm -hmm. best for you? And just because we hear something on social media and don't ever do this, or we should always do that, be a little skeptical, be open, yep. but try it and find out yourself. Don't just say, okay, you know, this is, this is definitely going to work or definitely you know, bad for me or whatever. You have to decide what works for you. And I don't like women sometimes, even Dr. Rosensweet, I think he has one client he put on oral estrogen as much as he doesn't like yeah. it. Yeah. And he had to make an exception because of that case. And so that yes. poor woman, you can imagine if she's the kind of person who's been watching all of us and says, oh, it's bad. <laughs> she's gotten her brain already fixed. Like, this is bad for me. You know, it's, and I'm sure Dr. Rosenstreet checked all of her cardiovascular of risks as yes. well. So I, I really want women to uh, also not feel bad if yeah. they cannot take whatever we think is the best yes. or what they hear is 100%. the best. Uh, there are other there are other ways, and even women who cannot or choose not to take hormone therapy, they sometimes feel bad. Oh, I wish I could do this. I can't. Well, there's other ways you could protect your heart and your bones and your breasts. There, and yeah. and I think you can't out hormone your way through a bad diet and lifestyle, anyways. Yeah. So we should be doing all this stuff, anyways. And I I just don't want those women to feel bad and scared for one thing or another. So the message yeah. is really do what works for you and regardless yeah. of what you may hear. Yeah. Because I'll, I have worked with women who have been on oral estrogen and have said that they feel great and their markers are great. I, in my views is if you have the choice, we obviously want to choose safety first. So if you can do the safest way to take these hormones that the research shows us being the safest way, which is transdermal when it comes to estrogen and testosterone, then it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, we if you can do it that way, great. If you can't, let's work with that. And I think that that's the beauty of finding a practitioner that isn't taught by one person. Mm -hmm. um, you and I both, Zora, we, we've learned amongst the best of the best and mm -hmm. all these different protocols. And I love that we can approach women in menopause with this super open mind, like, let's just see what's going to work for you. We're going to start with the basics, what we know to work best and is the safest. And then, yeah, you, I can't tell you guys how many times I've had to like veer off complete track. Like we just had a woman recently in our clinic and who, no matter what she did, like patch cream, nothing was absorbing the estrogen. Mm -hmm. And so we finally were like, let's do injection, which is really not often that we have to do injectable estradiol. And sure enough, we start, she starts using the injectables and it works and it's bringing her levels up and she feels amazing. And it's like, okay, awesome. Pellet therapy. Pellet therapy has got a total bad rap out there, which I, and I, and it's not something I recommend, at least not to start because you put them in, you can't get them back out for three months. But 
I can't tell you how many women I know that feel absolutely amazing on their testosterone pellets. And so I'm not going to touch that. If you feel good and it's working for you, fantastic. Keep going. Yeah. So yeah, every single one of us is different. There's different, you know, options. Like we, we were, we were saying like, if, if a patch, sometimes patch works over cream, sometimes suppository, sometimes we have to do suppository, sometimes cream, even progesterone cream, some women are too sensitive to, and we have to use, um, we got to go with the suppository. And then worst case scenario, I've had women, I've had to actually recommend the Mirena birth control IUD <laughs> to protect their uterus. Uh, once, once I recommend it, she didn't do it, but I was like, she, we tried every natural form of progesterone there was. She couldn't tolerate any of it without having a really bad reaction. And she wanted to stay on estrogen because she felt great on the estrogen. So the last resort is an IUD, which of course is not the best thing, but not going to go her, a life without estrogen. I think that that was worse than yeah. the IUD. So yeah, I think you we have to be super open-minded and know that these things work because it's coming from a compounding pharmacy. Don't believe when people say to you like, oh, it's because it's not regulated. You don't know how much you're getting in every dose. Who cares? Because <laughs> the hormone levels change from day to day for the entire, your entire fertile life. So if you know, you're getting 20 milligrams one day from your progesterone cream and 50 the next great. <laughs> like yeah. you're going to be mimicking more of your natural cycle. That's the way I see it. Compound pharmacists are incredible. I can't, I have never met a compounding pharmacist. I don't love they're all in it to like really help women with their bioidentical hormones. They can formulate exactly what you need and like we were just saying, everybody's individual. Some women need really high doses of, of stuff that you can't get in a prescribed pharmaceutical brand. Like the, the patch only goes up to one milligram a day. Um, the gel goes to point is 0. 0.75 milligrams a day. So really, if you if you're somebody that needs more than that, which there's a lot of women that do, it's going to start costing you an arm and a leg to go with that pharmaceutical company when you can go to a compounding pharmacist and say, give me a one milligram per dose so I can use two milligrams a day or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So compounding pharmacists are fantastic. You can adjust the dose. You can put it in all different sort. We've had suppositories made, the injectable incipionate, injectable and in MCT oil for testosterone. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can do it in shea butter. You can do it like <laughs> with menopause method. He's doing it in jojoba oil. So the, the, then you have the option of having these like really clean options, which the patch is not clean. It's glue. You're putting a glue on your body and sticking yeah. something to your skin, which I use the patch because I love it, but it's not, like, I can't imagine that that's good for me. The, yeah. What's in that? It's a chemical, right? Yeah. So we, we should talk about chemicals because we learned a lot mm -hmm. about that with Dr. Rosenstreet is uh, through his program. And, and it made, when I first heard it, I was thinking that makes perfect sense. What are we rubbing on our bodies all day long or once or twice a day, but every single day, if you're taking a gel or a cream, whether it's a, a compounded or not, we have to make sure, or at least we, we want to think about what is that carrier? What is in this? Because in this health and wellness space, we're always like, hey, you know, be careful of what you're putting on. We don't want to have parabens and we don't want to have toxins and there's our hormone disruptors and, and, and all this stuff. So we never question what is in our products, what's in our hormones, because it's only, I think he said it was like 0.8% or of the actual product is the hormone. The rest is a binder, is a, is a carrier, right? And that has, is chemicals, carbapol, polymers, other solvents. These are things that could be toxic for us, especially if you're like, if you're a sensitive type kind of person who's sensitive to everything. And then, you know, the moment you put on a lotion or whatever, you're going to start breaking out and feeling really bad. So I really want people to, that's what I think is so great about compounding is that you can have the control of what's in there. And I think it's pretty much obligatory if you are a sensitive type, because you, if you are sensitive to these chemicals, anything you get over the counter is going to have usually some of these, these chemicals. So 
yeah, if you want to be in this non-toxic space, then compounding is 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 great. I'm I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Heather Hirsch coming up, and I know she's really anti-compound. So sorry, guys, if you're listening, <laughs> you're her. It's it's all confusing. So what I really want to stress again, you do what's right for you. If you yeah. hear that compound and you can't it's not regulated it's not that no it is regulated right as i understood dr rosenstreet says no these compounding pharmacies have a lot of checks yes. and balances yes. and and in the end you got to see if it works for you if you're buying the overcounted stuff or the prescription stuff and it's not working it's not working and finally you go and find a compounding pharmacy that makes a formula that's working for you I'm sorry. I, I mean, I have to. I'll bring this up on Dr. Hirsch to see what she says. When what do you do with those cases? Right? Not everybody can tolerate or care, wants to do uh, care do do a, take hormones that have um, some of these solvents in it. So and the the hormones are the hormones. That doesn't change the chemical structure of a bioidentical hormone, whatever it is: progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone. It's the exact same thing derived from the exact same plants in whether it's from a pharmaceutical company that's slapping a name brand on it, or is it the same, it's the same ingredient that a compounding pharmacy is adding to his cream base. There's no difference. So I I just came out with my own line of over the counter hormone creams. Oh yes. And I had to do all of the research on this because mm -hmm. you want you definitely want USP grade hormones, right? That's what everybody's using. That USP doesn't change. grade that, what is that? Yes. So what's what does USP stand for? I don't know. Oh. USP. It must be I'm thinking the United States I don't know, patent or protected or verified, or it's, it's a verification yeah. process, but I'm wondering if that's only in the U S. So I'm just thinking about my other, my audience who are, who are not in North America. What do they, what would be the alternative? And this will be a question for one of my other guests who are, who are coming on, who's in, in the UK. And she may be able to answer that. I don't know the answer. I, I, um, I don't know. I know in I the U.S. The it's answer. a it's a it's a it's a standard that we uh, want to have, but <laughs> it is. That's all I know is that you want USP grade, which is yeah. We'll look it up and we'll we'll figure out what that is. <laughs> but the the basically we're all using the same hormones because those can't be patented, mm -hmm. and this is where pharmaceutical companies they're not making they they weren't making any money from bioidentical hormones. They could make money from Premarin because that was could be patented. Mm -hmm. But they can't patent bioidentical hormones. So they had to come up with a delivery system and a dose, a very specific, unique dose to their product to in order to patent that. Mm -hmm. So that's where the difference is. And so they make money. The doctors will make money prescribing that because anything that they prescribe that's from a pharmaceutical company, they're going to get a kickback from it. So they're going to all really doctors. I've, I've, I've interviewed doctors who say they have, they don't. So I don't know if some do and some don't. I don't know. Have I'm you sure. ever asked that yeah. question on your podcast? I no. Yeah. There some doctors yeah. will be like, no, we don't get paid. Like, I don't know where this comes from. And I know I think they do if some do and you know, some like don't, the, I think. Like the pharmaceutical reps, if they're trying to convince a doctor to use their stuff over somebody else's, they do offer compensation. Mm -hmm. So whether or not that, that happens with every Doug, who knows? Mm -hmm. But they if can. Not, I wouldn't I don't know. I have to do a little bit more investigation if that happens in Europe. I have a feeling it's doesn't happen as often. Um, I don't I know. doubt I'm, it. In Europe. I'm, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, for we'll, some reason, <laughs> we'll find that out. We'll find out this information because I think it's important to know. And, 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 and you hear, yeah, you just hear sometimes people make these blank statements and I think it's just sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And uh, yeah, well, I would like to know percentages personally, yeah. like, is it 80% or 50%? Um, well, and I think too, like some people, some doctors will actually get a kickback from compounding pharmacies. My naturopath does. Mm, yeah, exactly. So for using his compounding pharmacy, she gets money yeah, for sending yeah. people there. 
So, yeah. well, I, yeah, it's everybody wants to make a buck. <laughs> you just have to hope that you fall with somebody who is actually putting your interest first and hopefully yeah. is okay. I mean, the kickbacks are fine if it's really a good, safe product and it is in your interest. I don't care if people are making money as long as it's working for me, right? And it's safe yeah. and effective. Exactly. Yeah. So, but I just want people to understand that there is no difference. Like there's no, you're still using the same hormone that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. It is body identical. It is just, mm -hmm. it is something that cannot be changed. And it's, because if it did, then it would be something else, right? Then it would be yeah. considered a synthetic hormone. Yeah. But the percentages, I think that's the, the, um, the argument that people who are anti-compounding pharmacies would say, well, we don't know how much is actually in there. If it's and if it's consistent every time, but if it's Which working, is just such for a you, stupid point, though. Well, if it works, then great. If it's not working, right? then then maybe yeah, they then maybe right. have a point. I don't know. Or yeah, then you or you yeah. tell the compounding pharmacy it's it's not working. Let's change the formula and make. But how many else. women do you know? Like, uh, there's millions of women on compounded hormones, flourishing. Yeah. Yeah. So if that was a problem, yeah, that was widespread. Would we not hear about that by now? Yeah. Because yeah. every woman would be saying, oh, I tried compounding, didn't work. Yeah. We would know. Yeah. And I can tell you that, you know, yeah. out of our thousands of women that come to us for, for hormone replacement therapy, majority mm -hmm. are on some form of compounded because they tend to be cheaper than getting the patch or, yeah. or you know, if they don't have medical coverage, compounding creams are cheaper. Yeah. And once you so, figure out your formula, if, I know for a lot of women, it works to not only financially, but just for ease is to combine the creams as well. Some of them will combine their, their estradiol, estriol and, and progesterone in one cream. It's, it's, that's once you figure it out, the I dosage, don't like that, I don't like yeah. to start like that because we like to play around with the percentages of the dosages and how much and all that. But I've met women who are like, oh, it's so much easier. And if it works and it's all, I mean, I get it why it's easier and cheaper to do it that way. And, um, mm -hmm. it's just that I'd like to see this, these people in, in a year or two or three and see if, it's still consistent because mm -hmm. over time, our skin changes, our body changes. And right when we think we got the right formula, <laughs> we're it's not working anymore <laughs> and we got to adjust again. So another message to women listening is, is, you know, first of all, we knew that at least in Dr. Rosensweet's experience, 25% of the women actually get it spot on. You know, you come that first visit. I was going to say that. The, yeah. the, 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 your, your dosage, it's all working fine. 75% not not working so well it's no. or they're not in you know after testing they're not in the right ranges so you still need to adjust and yeah. and so it takes time so i like women to not be discouraged if at yeah. first it doesn't work to please keep mm -hmm. going and that's why i love mm -hmm. sending them to you as well because you in your in your membership group as well as your doctors that you work with you're you're able to keep in touch with the the, the woman to help her figure these yeah, out right yeah. and yeah. uh and most people just go to the doctor and the doctor sends them away and with their first prescription and that's it and see you next year that's i don't know how that works i mean <laughs> no wonder so many people yeah drop out because yeah there's 75 percent they do really quite getting it yeah. yeah and we'll hear we'll have we always have to top women off the cliff <laughs> that's what you like to say because they'll they'll be in the group and they'll be like I've been on hormones now for a month and I just feel terrible. And I'm just, I'm still having all of these problems and I'm, I've got this. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this is normal. Everything mm -hmm. you just said, totally normal because it takes months for all of the hormones to interact with each other and to level each other out. They all work synergistically together. So you start giving a woman hormones who's been without hormones for a long time or still has some hormones going on. And so you're really not sure like where, okay, do we need just a little bit of estrogen here? Is she going to, and that's going to be enough or, so you're tweaking these doses and then you got to wait for them to interact with each other, level each other out, kind of do their thing. And that's usually up to about three months. And then you can kind of go, okay, where do we, okay, now what? 
-hmm. now that we've gotten over that first three months, now we need to do some adjusting. Some women need adjusting within a couple of weeks of starting because hormones are so fast to act. So some women, they can start estrogen and they'll start getting tender breasts and they start putting on water weight and they panic. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting fat. Like what's happening? It's like, okay, there's something your body is probably missing something that's going to help you metabolize that estrogen. So let's back it up. Let's completely lower the dose. Sometimes come right off of it. Let's start you on some certain supplements to help your detoxification pathways, your gut health, and start exercising. Okay, now let's put a little tiny baby dose of estrogen in and see how your body handles it. And they're like, oh, okay, now this is better. And mm -hmm. so every person's going to be different in how their body's going to react. Testosterone, we see a lot of women that that they, they, they push down this really androgenic pathway. They don't know unless they've done a Dutch test, they don't know if they push down that pathway or not until they start testosterone therapy. Dutch this is, is why the, I don't, the, the urine metabolite test. The, yeah. Just so people know the Dutch dried urine um, test of comprehensive hormones. It's a, it's, it's not a blood test. It's a, it's a, dried urine test. And, and I never, I, we, you know, I are so used to these words and, and I'm just thinking sometimes people who are just coming on the podcast for the first time. Yeah. I, I like to just stop, interrupt and, and, and just explain yes. some of these things yeah. for, for <laughs> those people. We don't want to forget about you. No, all right. no. So this There's is why you people that don't know what that is. And I, I totally <laughs> interrupted you. So <laughs> you were talking about, that's why you, you test testosterone, um, mm -hmm. in, in the blood. Or in, 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 in your, it will test it in urine so we can see if they push down this pathway because that, oh, okay, the, yeah. the, the Dutch test tells us that, but blood doesn't mm. blood tests. Don't, it doesn't test. It's called the five alpha reductase um, enzyme. And so if you're pushing down that pathway and you start testosterone or you go get pellets put in, which you can't get out and you push down that pathway, well, We've had women that have had clitoral enlargement. They start losing their head hair. They start getting whiskers on their face because they're pushing it down the super masculine pathway. And you don't know that until you start testosterone. And some women, it's just a baby little dose. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went on testosterone and I broke out in acne all over my face. And so I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> I took, I looked like a little pizza face teenager girl again. So I had to like <laughs> dial it way back did some genetic testing, found out I don't process my testosterone very well. So now I've got the things in place that help me to break it down that I don't have. And so that, you know, is, I, I'm not a good, good with glucuronidation. That's mm. why I needed to get help with that. So there's different, there's so many nuances to hormones and hormone replacement therapy. And yes, it can be that easy where you just slap it on for the first time. And I've had women like one week later, they're like, Karen, so good in my life. My vagina's come back to life. I've got my sex drive. I've, I feel amazing. My energy's back. My mood is better. I'm sleeping. Like you saved my life and on they go. It's like, yeah. oh, well, that was easy. But yeah. a lot of the time it does take some tweaking. Some women we've had, they've taken a year, a full year to get it right to, for us to figure out what's going to work for them mm. and the supplements they need and the lifestyle that they need and to make everything work well, like a well-oiled machine. So mm. Don't get discouraged if you tried it and you're like, I had a horrible experience with HRT. It was terrible. Know that there's, I don't know if there's anybody that I've ever worked with that we weren't able to figure out a way to make them feel great and be optimized with their hormone therapy. Question about the testosterone when you were taking that and you had all these negative side effects with a bit too much. Did was the libido like amazing and you started build muscle like there's no tomorrow or did you not even get those benefits? At least it was something, no? No, because I broke out in acne and I immediately went off. Of oh. <laughs> because it was seriously, it was like all over my face. I was like, oh, this is not good. Uh. <laughs> and so now I'm on half that dose. Um, definitely helps with muscles, definitely helps with the libido for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was yeah. just I was wondering if at least there should be something good coming out of that. Yeah. And, um... Some women get sex drive from testosterone. Others don't. Mm. It's, it, it's interesting. A lot of women, I think it's about 50, 50 where it's the estrogen replacement that gives them their sex drive back. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And estrogen is really important for sex drive and for vagina health. So some women, they, they need the estrogen more so than the testosterone. Some it's a combination. Some you put the testosterone in and it's like game on. They're like, oh, okay, there it is. Yeah. And then some don't ever get it back. Yeah. Or usually though, that in that case, like if they don't get a sex drive from replacing their testosterone and estrogen, they typically never had much of a sex drive to begin with. Mm. But and those so- people would usually I'm th- the those who the creams are not really working, they tend to go with injectables and that mm-hmm. tends to that works help better. A, a lot better. But have you ever had a woman a who's lot. like, even with the injectables, it's still not working? Yep. Mm. Yep. So then and it's another a lot issue. of, yeah. yeah, and we, exactly. Psychological usually, um, we've had a lot of women that came from the pellet world or, or an injectable that had sky high testosterone, like really high, way past the upper range. And they felt so good They're, they They all say the same thing. Oh my, I feel so good. I have my energy back. I'm putting on muscle. I'm losing weight. My sex drive is through the roof. My partner's so happy, but I'm getting really bad whiskers. I'm losing my head. Oh, there's a like, price they're paying. Is, there is. I'm like, you know, you're, you're pretty much transitioning to be a man at this point. Like, <laughs> and this is what it like, it, it's not fair. And this is why your husband wants sex all the time. Now you understand <laughs> why they want it. So you, but unfortunately, you can't get there without having all of these masculine side effects because it's just too much testosterone for a woman. <laughs> well, then I'm wondering those women perhaps doing some of the the drugs that are out there for women for hyposexual um, disorders. And that yeah, may be some, better than the testosterone. Yeah. I mean, there's also side effects uh, because you're doing a drug. But again, it it all depends on how important that is for you and your partner. And mm-hmm. and I always stress that people intimacy and and relationships and sex drive are are really important. Even though it's sometimes the last thing on your mind when you're going through menopause. And I get it. If you're not sleeping and you can dry vagina and you're feeling like shit, of course you don't <laughs> want it. But I don't want women to put it aside either. I think. Focus on that too, because I think once you get your intimacy back or your desire and intimacy, that life is so great. I mean, it's it's really nice. And then I think there's a lot of cascading side effects that are really, really nice uh, that, that come with that. You know, I've got like 20 more questions for you and we have come up at the hour. The time has gone by so fast. I How could talk to you forever. <laughs> I swear, I think I've got gone through like three questions <laughs> and, and I got like 25 here. So I, I want to another session with you. I, I, we, you did go through a lot, which is great. And yeah, I think for yeah. a lot of women, this is already, their heads are exploding with the information you've given us. Um, which I probably should wrap it up a little bit. Yes. Like, Cause I don't want to little... leave. Cause I feel like I just threw out. So I had like verbal diarrhea on everybody and now I need to like <laughs> pull it back in and like make sense of it for everybody so they can kind of have a takeaway. Yes. <laughs> which, yes. Yes. And so the takeaway everyone is always, of course, it's really good to work with a, a hormone practitioner if you can afford to do so. Not everybody can. And that's where people like Zora comes in and myself come in. We have membership groups where we can teach you about your hormones and how to dial in your hormones on your own, which I think is really an important thing to learn to do. Um, So if you can't work with somebody, that's okay. You can still do this on your own with some assistance. Um, There's always options out there. And I think you and I both, Zora, it's really important to us that we have this information available to the masses who want it you know that it's not this like just high end you can only come see us if you have this if you're in this price point Um, because a lot of the hormone clinics they are like that and I know like even our hormone clinic we're expensive but it's it's because we've got to pay so many people out of it and we spend a lot of time with our patients you know we, we spend over an hour with every person and we're very attentive and you know we we go through everything lifestyle diet you know it's not just here's your hormones we'll see you later we 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 address everybody very personally so there is help to be had there is practitioners to see and there's group coaching for for women that can't afford the higher end stuff. It's why I produced my own creams. 
um, which I'm going to, I got to get to you, Zora. Yes. But... I want to know more about these. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I wanted to create something because there was such a need. I've been in my group for over six years. I've been in this business for over 10 years. And there was a lot of women that couldn't have access to hormone replacement therapy that their doctors would refuse. This happens all the time. Refuse to give it to them. It's still happening. Um, they'll refuse to give yeah. it to them until they're in menopause. It's mm -hmm. like, well, we're going to wait till you're this hot mess, you know, years into your menopause. And then, okay, well, once your vagina's dried up and you, you've you dried up and you've, you're 20 pounds overweight, okay, well, guess I'll give you something now, yeah. which is just that's such a terrible way to address this. Yeah. And so I wanted to have something that people could trust um, and that was clean. And so talking about all the things that could be in our hormone replacement therapy, whether it comes from a compounding pharmacy or from a pharmaceutical company, both of them could have parabens in them and other synthetic chemicals. And so I wanted to create a line of hormone creams that were available over the counter for women that they could use them topically. I've got one that's topical for the face um, oh, that's been cool. shown to be absolutely incredible for anti-aging. The research shows that within six months of women using estradiol and estriol on their face had a 60 to 100% reduction in pore size, that their wrinkle depth um, shrunk, that their collagen increased by like 33%. Like it, it was crazy. Oh, wow. That's oh a yeah. Lot. And I've been using bias on my face for a very long time. So and it and it does work. And so I wanted it to be available to my women. And so yeah. you can get that. Um, we've got a progesterone cream um, that does absorb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not for everybody, because there'll be some people that don't absorb cream no matter what kind it is. Yeah. But I mean, it, it does work to protect the uterine lining if your body absorbs it well. Um, and that's at a 50 milligram dose. And then I've got the only over-the-counter estradiol only um, cream available. Wow. That nobody else does. So, um, and that's at a very low dose. And so it's for women that are at the end of perimenopause and the beginning of menopause. Um, I do have a free little ebook that I'll give you the link for, and then you can just pass, you can put it in the show notes and it's, it's a user guide to our products, but it's just a general user guide for any bioidentical hormone therapy. A lot of the stuff that we've talked about here today, I go through some of the history and then I give a long list of links for PubMed research on, um, hormone therapy. Thank you so much. So I'm really excited about these creams. I swear every a couple of times a week, I have a woman reaching out to me where she has a story of her doctor will not give her hormones or will mm -hmm. not give her uh, the transdermal like estrogen. They'll only give oral or it's uh, or they they will they threaten to take it away next month or when they hit, you know, 10 years post menopause. And it's it's so sad because these women really want to get their hands on this and they and I ask them I mean I don't know their history and all that I say when I ask why you know is there like a huge risk or something for you that I've never heard of and and they they say no they they cannot get an answer and it's just yeah. pretty much guidelines not really looking at the person so um and I know a couple of these women are in in in, in Ireland and I would love to know if maybe you can trust steps I know you may be able to get some of your stuff to the UK I'm not so sure about Europe it'll be tough but um maybe in in Ireland it's a questionable thing but we'll we'll test it out I really want to try some of these creams myself I mm -hmm. I trust you a hundred percent in terms of what you're putting in there what are the you're not putting any toxic toxic ingredients in there this is going to be wonderful for a woman who's a sensitive type it's great to actually have a cream that we can put on our face uh because i always don't i don't really recommend women just to take their you know creams and just slab it all their face you know i i, I would i would suggest maybe whatever you have left over you know from your hands from when you rub yeah. it in your your arms you can put it on your face but it's not necessarily made for that but you're actually making something for for the face so I'm super mm -hmm. excited that you've done this. I I know that we can generally get progesterone, at least you know from from uh, online. It's not such mm -hmm. a difficult thing to find, but the estrogen is. 
and yes, uh, right, and biased yeah. as, as well is not not always easy either. So for mm -hmm. those who like bias, we're going to cover the bias thing, I think, in the next episode yeah. uh, on what that means and triest and <laughs> all the differences. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> you, we could have like 50 episodes easily on all of this stuff. And that's why women are so confused. <laughs> But yeah, no you've, <laughs> <laughs> you've helped us clear a little bit of the confusion and the safety yeah. profile as well. And uh, and really, and I have a coupon code too for your listeners. So, oh yes, um, coupon code yeah. Zora. Make it easy, Z O R A, yep. right? Yep, all cool. capital letters, and that gets you ten percent off. And uh, the coupon won't work if the products are already on sale because we do run sales quite often on them. Yeah. So just to give everybody a heads up there, the, the sales are better than the coupon code. So <laughs> yeah. So you don't don't be discouraged by that. Yeah. Uh, and they last you like, you know, another reason why I needed to make it affordable was, you know, you go through a compounding pharmacist or you go through your doctor and you get um, pharmaceutical grade. Um you're you're looking at over a hundred dollars a month for for some of these hormones, mm -hmm. and my products, you know, a bottle is going to cost you fifty dollars, and progesterone, for instance, if you're cycling it, which you should be, will last you for one bottle will last you for four months. Four months. Oh wow! Yeah, so Fabulous. it's very cost effective, which once again is why I wanted to to do it was I wanted mm. this to be available to women if they wanted it. Oh, cool! So we've got the progesterone, the estradiol biased and estriol cream, right? Is no, that, not no I, I did not do a straight estriol. No. Okay. All right. So we've got the maybe one day. Three. We got three. We got three. Yeah. Awesome. There's more coming down the pipeline, but this is where I've started. <laughs> oh, super great. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna have a bunch of links for you for the book. Um as well as um the hormone quiz, you still have that on your website? Because I yep. we had that from last time. And that's really cool. I highly recommend people to check out your membership program as well. It's, it's I'm part of this. Like you invited me last during the last episode, and I jumped in, and I was blown away with how much information you give, the experts that you have that you invite, your own analysis, how you're helping these women, Karen. I don't know you getting their blood work, and you're going one by one with each of them. I'm mean, yeah. the attention you give them. <laughs> I am so, like really amazed, <laughs> amazed, and then and then the joy, you know, hearing how excited they are and how how you've helped them, it's so it's so wonderful, and I'm I'm just so grateful that you do everything that you do, and you inspire me to do a lot of things as well. I mean, you're just like my my superhero here, so oh, I follow thanks, you Laura. and everything you do, and I just I just love you oh, so much. That's sweet, I feel the same way about you. No. So before I let you go, um, I'm going to tell people in the, um, go to the show notes. You We're going to have links to everything, the membership program, the, the, the creams, the hormones. If you try these, I beg you to please get in touch with me and let me know how it goes, because anything mm -hmm. I recommend, um, I, I, I want to hear feedback because yeah. you know, I'm going to try these creams myself and I haven't tried them yet, but I trust Karen. I'm going to take and them, she gets them to you. <laughs> I, I got to get them to me somehow. I don't know where, but somehow, some way we'll find them. Uh, if you're outside of, of, of the U.S., you got to find somebody to be, be your, you know, hormone mule and, <laughs> and put it in their suitcase and bring it to you. Uh, Smuggle them you wanna, to you. What? Smell yeah. them over. Yes, we got to figure out a way. I mean, that'll probably be the best way for now until we can convince Karen to start producing in Europe and Australia, Asia, and all that. So she, she's going global at some point. I promise you. Just mark my words. Um, but I'll have a, a links to her Facebook, her Instagram, your YouTube is also great. Your podcast, I I just love binging on your podcast too and catching up on you. And you've been doing this for how many episodes do you have now? Uh, Three hundred and five, I think, or something. Oh, oh God, you've hit the 300 yeah, mark. Because I just did my 300th. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fabulous podcast. Please guys go and listen to it. Um, Zora has been on and she's going to come on again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could have these conversations. Because we're forever. besties. We're menopause besties. <laughs> we can my menopause bestie. You got to listen to it. Because if you like mine, you're going to absolutely love hers too. And you're just going to learn so much. Um, I, we are here to empower you. We want you to be 
armed with the right information as well as how to find the right information for you, right? And and how to approach your doctor as well, um, or just go to Karen, you know, just sort it all out for you. You don't have to worry about your doctor. You can, if you're at least in, in North America, you can do that. I would do that if I were there. So um, anyways, if I let you go, do you have any last words for a woman in menopause? Don't suffer, ladies. That's my big thing is I don't want you to suffer or think you have to suffer. And it still amazes me every day that I hear how, how, from how many women that I hear the little comments like, well, you know, I get hot flashes, but that's, I can live with that. Oh, well, yeah, my, you know, this is happening or I've gained 10 pounds or I've done this or I've done that. I can live with that. And it's like, no, but you don't have to. <laughs> so don't just don't settle for less. Like if you want to feel your best and look your best as you go through these times, you can. And so just don't settle for less if you don't want to. Great words. I am so 100% on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so hackable, right? So yes. thank you so much, Karen. And I will definitely, definitely see you next time.